Google has left little to the imagination with its yet to be released Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro devices. Thanks to Google leaking the devices really early on, but will the latest Pixel products succeed or will they fail? I'm Ryan from Android Authority, and a little bit later on, I'm gonna go over some of the things we hope Google improves on with the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro. But first, let's quickly go over what we already know and a few things that we can speculate on. Google did something that not many other device manufacturers would normally do. They leaked themselves. Google isn't exactly known for keeping secrets when it comes to its new device launches uh, and honestly there were already uh, some some interesting leaks with everything from product mock-ups down to actual leaks of hardware making its way to customers now what do we actually know well we know the colors the pixel 7 pro will come in obsidian or black uh, then you get hazel which is sort of a bluish green color with a gold stripe for the camera and then you've got snow and i'm not sure if they gave it any thought but uh, it's their seventh phone and it's called Snow. I feel like a Snow White reference, you know, might come to mind. Um, and then when you get down to the standard Pixel 7, which also comes in Obsidian as well as Snow, uh, they've swapped out Hazel for a creamy yellow lemongrass. Uh, I'll have to wait to smack it with a spoon in person to find out if it smells like lemon, but until then, let's just assume that it smells like a phone. The biggest update to the actual design of the phone seems to come from changes to the camera array, going from a metal finish design that feels less like Robocop. Thank you for your cooperation. And more like a Pixar Wall-E type character. And another thing that we know is that the Pixel 7 Pro will feature three cameras, while the Pixel 7 will only have two. And while we don't know for sure, we assume that Google is not going to stray too far from the Pixel 6 series with the 50 megapixel main, the 12 megapixel ultra wide found on both the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, with the latter getting a third camera in the form of a 48 megapixel telephoto. I mean, that's just what we're speculating right now, but we'll find out for sure pretty soon. And to be honest, if the Pixel 7 series has the same cameras as the Pixel 6, I don't think that's exactly a bad thing. You know, Google has been long known for keeping hardware around for multiple generations while still seeming to make photo magic through powerful AI and machine learning technology. So with the power of a new Tensor G2 processor, software might just be where we see some of the biggest improvements. Now, going down to leaks. Kuba Wojciechowski, yeah, that's a, that's a mouthful, and I, I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Uh, he recently tweeted about some leaked info on the Tensor G2 and had a great breakdown of why this chip would still be much better. And it was interesting to see what could potentially be in the final Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel 7. Kuba explains that the Tensor G2 does look very similar to the first gen Tensor. According to those leaking the device online with Geekbench reveals. And while it's important to note that the G2 is slower than the competition, uh, just from those leaks, these days delivering on good UX is more important, some would say. And I would recommend that you actually check out his entire breakdown and it's honestly fascinating to read. So link is below to that. So the biggest change being noted is actually the GPU switch. According to these leaks, and nothing's been confirmed yet from Google, but Google has moved on from the Mali G78 and into the Mali G710, uh, a third generation Valhall based GPU, which ARM says will deliver the highest ever energy efficiency for their GPU, as well as improved AI and mobile gaming experience. And on that note, both of these phones will feature the next gen Tensor G2 processor, which Google says will provide better speech recognition, add more powerful security, and Google even said that it will enhance customization of photos and video. So when it comes to photos, you know, how do you improve on something that's this close to perfection? Google is the king of image processing at this point. But it looks like the Pixel 7 Pro is more of a slow burn evolution than anything else because we're seeing more of the same stuff as the 6 Pro. 
So if you're looking for a redesign or something that's more drastic from Google, it's not gonna give you what you want. Now, if you're, if you're looking for something new, the Pixel Watch integration, you know, not new, but welcomed. Uh, it sounds like the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro will also have new integration with the much anticipated Pixel Watch allowing users to control a uh, media player from their wrist. Now, you know, obviously that's not a groundbreaking feature. We already have that through the Samsung Galaxy Watch as well as the Apple Watch and a number of other smart watches that are already available on the market. It's not exactly exciting, but Google is finally here with a smart watch. So better late than never. And we're looking forward to testing it out. So all things considered, the Google Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro should succeed if they make the improvements where they're needed. As my colleagues Robert and Rita have mentioned on AndroidAuthority.com, battery life struggled to meet the expectations despite the Pixel 6 Pro having a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. The fingerprint scanner was finicky at the best and at the worst, there were snails that were making better pace. The unreliable connectivity to networks and crashing apps when you just need them to work, that could spell failure for Google if they don't address them. And from the words of Trigzy himself, the lesson for the upcoming Google Pixel 7 is that excellent long-term purchases can't have issues being, well, a phone. Great cameras, live translation, and long-term upgrades tick all the right boxes. But losing signal on a trip out or apps crashing when you need them most, quickly turns livable niggles into buyer's remorse. And personally, I think if Google answers most of those questions that uh, Robert and uh, Rita have asked, and they continue to bring all of the great features that we have grown to expect from a stock Android experience, there's more than enough reason for Android users to make the jump and maybe even entice some of those Apple users across the aisle. What are you hoping to see from the Pixel 7 series? Is there anything holding you back or are you all in? What would be the biggest surprise Google could bring to the Pixel 7 launch? Let us know in the comments down below. But until next time, guys, I'm Ryan from Android Authority. Be kind and we'll see you on the next one.